are some children who by just nature are more communicative, more expressive, more talkative, and then you have boys. Um, so <laughs> if you're finding that you're not really getting that, I remember picking my girl up from school, my girls from school, and I get a play-by-play -play from immediately from when I drop them off to, you know, to when I pick them up. And um, I asked my son, how was your day? And he goes, fine. Meanwhile, he has a cast on his arm. I'm like, anything interesting happening? He's like, no. I go, you have a cast in your arm. He's like, sling. I go, okay, fine. Um, so you may want to recalibrate. You know, some kids are just not that communicative, and it's, it's, it's okay. But even that notwithstanding, I encourage parents to be mindful of just how critical they can be, meaning they don't necessarily mean to criticize, but there are some kids who, when they come out of their shell, come out of their room, and they, and they try to connect, regardless of the exterior or the, the bravado that they may present, they're very vulnerable. And I've seen parents, you know, that's like, why doesn't he want to talk to me? Meanwhile, the kid says anything, and the parent instantly either says something sarcastic or shot, shoots him down. And he doesn't, the parent doesn't mean to do that, but to the child who's very, maybe very sensitive, and some kids are super sensitive, the kind of kid you say, you know, can you please pass the soul? It's like, why are you screaming at me? Right, you know, some kids hear things differently. So when you have a child like that, you're not necessarily connecting with, it's important to, um, to consider that what you say may be misrepresented and to try to be as positive as you can and also listening is very important and when a child like this is, is trying to connect with you, you will find that they're going to come out of their shell, but if they get their hands slapped proverbially, proverb, you know what I mean, proverbially. Proverbially. Okay. <laughs> English is my second language, so. Um, then, you know, they're, they're, they're going to not come back, they're going to retreat and not come out again. So really listening, and listening means that you're not just nodding and, and going along with emotions, but any interruption, certainly with a cell phone or you know, a call, or someone comes into the room, it's, it's right now I'm talking to so-and-so, you will find, and this, I do believe that this lady will find that she can reestablish a connection. Again, first make sure you're calibrating your expectations right, but be positive in the conversation, and when the child is talking, really listen active listening without interruption. Everyone, by, as the rabbi said, we want, we're wired to connect. We want to connect with our parents in particular, but if we feel like that connection is short-circuited, we're going to retreat back, particularly a child who's not that communicative and expressive. So try to be as positive as you can, and any interruption mitigate. Someone comes into the room, I'm sorry, right now I'm talking to Shlomi, right now, what, this conversation, everything else has to wait. That is near magical in terms of reestablishing connection with a child.